What's up everybody? So today is a very fun day. Not only do I have my 2016 Nismo 370Z, but we are joined with another identical Nismo 370Z. So today's video, we're going to compare manual sports cars to an automatic sports car. And what better way to do that comparing apples to apples with the same car? There's always such a big debate with manuals and automatics in the sports car world. So we're finally going to compare the two, go over all the benefits to a stick shift, all the benefits to a really good automatic, and then of course all the downsides and see at the end of the day, which one is better. So setting off now in the automatic Nismo, kind of weird being in the exact same car as mine, but different. So with an automatic sports car, there are some downsides, but there are a lot of benefits. Something really simple that's a good benefit. It's easy to drive. It's convenient. It is more practical than a stick shift. When you are in bumper to bumper traffic, there's really nothing you have to worry about. It's not the clutch shifting and you don't have that annoying aspect. So with this car, just giving it gas, the car will shift, get me up to speed, and I can let off the gas when I'm there and we're up to speed. Another good thing about modern automatics, which a lot of people don't really realize until only the last few years, they are most likely faster than the manual counterpart. When I put this car into manual mode and I do my own shifting using the paddle shifters, I will probably be able to get a better zero to 60 time than the manual. And around the racetrack, this will most likely do a quicker lap time. And with modern automatics, they're actually good systems nowadays. I've always said that I think the Z does come with one of the best automatics you can get. The paddle shifters themselves are basically the same ones that you'd find in the GTR. So they're not just a cheap little plastic button on the steering wheel. They're actually a paddle that you have to pull. Then the transmission obviously shifts. And one thing that I love about this automatic, when you downshift it, it does do rev matching downshifts. It blips the throttle. It is really, really quick. It almost feels as quick as something like a twin clutch gearbox. It is super responsive. When you are taking the turns on the track or in the mountains, you are very engaged with the driving aspects of the vehicle. You can be in a lot of control in the car since your hands are always on the steering wheel. You can really just pinpoint the car. When you take the turns with the car, all you have to do is focus on the turn, hit the paddle. You don't have to worry about any kind of weird shifting or anything like that. The car is direct, super solid. Quick downshift when I need more power. Quick upshift super responsive. Now one of the biggest downfalls with an automatic sports car, and this is something that I do find and a lot of you are probably going to agree with, with an automatic car, when you put it into drive, you can just drive it normal. Now I know that might sound like a positive to a lot of people, and it is for a lot of people, but for some of us like myself, when it's in drive, it's just a normal car now. It's just the car's driving, all I have to do is give it some gas, brake when needed, and steer the car as the road goes. So it does take away a little bit of the drama of driving a stick shift. When you're in the stick, you have to control the vehicle. You have to change gears or you're really not going to drive successfully. So with this car, I can just sit back and drive and let the car do a lot of the work. So from the enthusiast standpoint, that is the biggest downfall with an automatic sports car. You have a very fun to drive car that handles good, has a lot of power, but then you can be disconnected from it and just let the car do a lot of the work. Now, since we're talking about modern automatics, obviously like this car back into manual mode, when I'm shifting myself though, there is a lot of driver engagement. So if you are in drive all the time, you're kind of missing out on what the car has to offer. But when you're in manual mode, shifting yourself, rev matching downshifts, clicking the paddle, you're experiencing really quick upshifts. And since there's no interruption in power, all you gotta do is hit a paddle real quick, punch it. The moment you hit the paddle, it shifts. There's no delay. You get to completely experience the acceleration that the car has to offer. There's no split second delay when you're shifting. It's just power all the time. And that is a big plus to an automatic sports car. So now back into my car, which has the six speed manual transmission. And I do have an exhaust, so it does sound a little bit different. So in a manual transmission vehicle, what are the benefits? The main benefit that I would say you are getting when you buy this transmission is the driver engagement. Because in order to make this car perform well, I actually have to do something to make it. Because I'm going uphill right now, going about 50 miles an hour in six gear. If I give it gas, nothing really happens and nothing's gonna happen until I shift. So of course I have to manually shift it. I have to select the right gear. And then I'm actually able to get it into a good gear to where I can have a lot of power. Another thing with the manual transmission vehicles, it is really rewarding to drive, especially with the Z. This is actually not the easiest stick shift to learn on, especially, and it's really not the easiest one to drive. When I first drove a Z car with a manual, it was a little sketchy. It's kind of jerky in first and second gear. So there is a challenge to it. And while it does make it a little bit more difficult, that also makes it a little bit more rewarding when you do get a really good shift. And when I get that right gear, you know, when I do my own manual rev matching to make sure the car is in jerky when I down shift going around a turn it's rewarding because I made the car do that I made the car drive better it wasn't just letting the car do all the work 
Now there of course are downfalls. There's a lot of people who are not gonna buy a manual transmission sports cars. So some downfalls, if you have to deal with traffic, it is annoying when you're in bumper to bumper, slow speed traffic, constantly shifting, letting off the gas, starting up, doing that. It is annoying, it gets annoying. Your leg gets tired, it's just, it is an annoying thing to have to deal with. So if you are in heavy congested areas, your daily commute consists of bumper to bumper traffic, you know, a manual is going to be kind of annoying for you. And you might not get the positive benefits out of that transmission because the negatives are too high. Another drawback, like we talked with the other one, this car is actually slower than the one that we were just in. The zero to 60 time, I can get this car under five seconds. The automatic car though is going to be more consistent and much quicker. When I did my own zero to 60 videos, I did time and time just to make sure I could get a really good average. And they were a little bit different each time. One time I got the low five seconds, one time I got high four. So it varies, you're not going to be consistent. So if you are drag racing your car, you're looking for that consistent time every single time, a manual is gonna be a lot harder to actually dial it in an automatic. You either do the paddle shifting or even let it shift by itself and it will be really, really consistent. When going around a racetrack, with this car I do have to deal with downshifting myself, upshifting, picking the right gear so I'm not boggy. So that does take my hand off the wheel and my feet have to do some movement as well. So it does make driving this in a performance setting a little bit more challenging just because you're doing more things at once. In the automatic, it's my hands on the wheel. I hit the paddle whenever I want to. The car will do everything for me to where it's not gonna be a jerky upshift or downshift. If it's an automatic, I just mash the gas and it'll accelerate. I don't have to manually make sure I'm in the right gear and take the time to actually shift. And then another thing with the car, you will have an interruption in power when you're flooring it. So second gear. So there was a delay from second to third gear. That just is how it's going to be. No matter what, even some of the big fanboys of manual say, you will never be able to shift as quick as an automatic. It's just physically impossible. So at the end of the day, you're buying your next sports car, you're not sure, manual or automatic. I think the biggest thing to look at is your daily drive. What are you gonna be doing with that car? Do you have bumper to bumper traffic that you're gonna deal with? Do you get to go on back roads to work every day like what I do? So if you have a lot of traffic that you're gonna have to deal with, you might really not see the benefit with a manual transmission because most of your time in that car, it's gonna be kind of annoying having to shift all the time and just deal with that aspect. If you go for a really good automatic, like in the Z that we just showed, You'll be able to drive the car in drive, go to work and back, enjoy the car for what it does have to offer, and then when you do get your weekends to hit the mountains or the track, put it in manual mode, take traction control off, and have a really good fun time. Having that precise control with your shifting, using the paddle shifter so you do get the fun aspect. The owner of the Automatic Z, we were just talking about it, he uses the paddles almost every single time he drives the car because it does give a lot of driver feedback. He gets to control the car. So then why would you buy the manual? Personally, I bought the manual just because it is really, really fun. It turns a boring drive into an experience every single time. I get to go on really nice roads to work every day so I don't deal with traffic. But even when I'm just doing something small, grocery store or something, it's a fun adventure. It's not just popping in to drive, heading to the store and back. It's me driving my car, shifting it, playing around with it, and just having a fun time in whatever circumstance. So I think with a manual car, you get to enjoy the fun factors of it all the time because every time you drive the car, it's gonna be an experience. While the automatic, there are gonna be some boring times. So overall, buy the car that you want. Stop hating on the people who buy the cars that you didn't want to buy. The great thing about the world is you can buy the car that you want with the transmission you want. And the other great thing is there are fantastic transmissions, manuals and automatics that will give you tons of fun. And as long as you go with a really fun sports car, whether you're shifting manually or hitting a paddle with a downshift, when you punch it, You will have a smile on your face no matter what. So just buy the fun sports car that works for you with the transmission that works for you. Hopefully this was a pretty unbiased and open-minded review of manuals versus automatics comparing two of the same cars. Overall, they're both pretty darn awesome in the Nisma 370Z and this car is a lot of fun. <laughs> So hope you all enjoyed the video. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below. Comment below on what sports car you like and what transmission you went with and why you picked that transmission. Hope you all enjoy the really awesome drone footage. The owner of the automatic had a sweet drone and we got some really epic shots. So hope you all enjoyed that. So thank you all for watching and we'll see you all next video.